Okay, we're getting ready to install the um, auxiliary power switch kit fairing mount. This is the switch kit that goes on the right side of the fairing panel. The uh, bike is a 2017 uh, Ultra Limited. Here is the harness kit. This is the uh, switch part. Wire ties. The harness with the relay <clears throat> power output from accessory one power output from accessory two Harley wiring diagrams 2017 and 2017 wiring diagram so I click on that now the first time you go into this you I think you have to create an account which it is obviously very easy um, so we're going to go for main harness one FLH um, with fairing. So I'm going to click on that, hit, hit uh, this button right here, make it big. We can go ahead and look uh, right down here, and here is accessory one and accessory two, and those are the color wires. And I'll show you where to find, you know, where they come out. Um, and then if you go over here, you see the uh, that that was the uh, the right hand uh, switch switch pack, and here is the left hand switch pack. And you can see this one's dedicated to the cooling fan, which is where I have my um, cool flow hooked up. Um, and then here is that green wire, which over on the left panel operates the uh, uh, this middle. This is the middle switch that powers up the green wire. It's good for two amps. And that's where I have my fog lights, which draw about 0.7 amps. And then this one is to turn on the passing lamps, auxiliary lamp switch right here. And note the color of the wires there. I'm gonna come back over here and I'm gonna to go to main harness FLH three of three. Three of three right here. We can go up here to the upper right and we can see aux devices. This is right here. This is the um, left panel. There's ground. This is the two accessory buttons in the right switch pack on the fairing. And the green one is the middle button on the uh, left switch pack on the fairing. This is 325B. This is that, that accessory plug that is in the right panel that has ground and it's hooked up to the same power relay uh, that powers um, all the accessories. Um, in these contacts. So there you go. It's a ton of useful uh, information in here. All right, we'll go ahead and install the uh, switch, get that done. I go ahead and put a little piece of tape on the Torx driver to hold the uh, screw on there. It'll go flying all over the place. Okay, so now I've got uh, the switch installed and plugged in, and I'll go ahead and uh, screw that uh, cover back on. Okay, and here are the installed switches ready to go. Okay, in these steps Harley wants you to bring power from the battery um, into this connector by inserting this oops, into 325B, plugging this into 325B using only the single lead, um, and, and that brings power into the relay. Um, it also, on the accessory two um, lead, it gives you, you know, constant battery power, um, unswitched battery power right there. Um, the challenge is, is that 325B is used by other accessories. It, it, comes, um, it comes on the bike with just a rubber plug on it sitting right here. This is that 325B connector, and it would normally just have a rubber plug. Well, I've got the cool flow fan, 
and it uses 325B. Um, 325B stock gives you ground and ignition on power. Um, so Harley wants you to remove the ceiling pin uh, and then just go ahead and insert this pin in, in there, um, which is easy to do. However, um, and, then, and then you plug that connector from the harness into 325B. So it would be plugged in here. Well, I'm using that for my cool flow fan. And other accessories are, are sometimes used by this 325B. So with this only using one lead, I see no point in, in doing anything down there, buying any kind of a Y harness or making one or whatever I had to do. Um, I am just going to remove the terminal from, from this pin and I'm going to uh, solder and shrink wrap this and connect it, connect it to the battery from here instead of from the 325B and leave my 325B alone. I hope that makes sense. The accessory switches, which we've just installed, um, will send uh, power into this connector, which goes right there. It'll have be there with a the rubber plug. Um, it's got three three leads plus a ground. The, the uh, black one's the ground. Uh, this one right here, blue with green, is powered on the left switch bank by this button, the middle button. The other two are powered by the accessory uh, switches that we just put in. Okay, so we can see this pin is off. And the other accessory button lead is right here. And we can see that it's off. So we'll go up here, turn on the uh, two buttons. There and there. I've got the bike uh, and accessory, so you can see that um, it works in both accessory and ignition. Um, might be something that you needed to know. So, let's see if I can do this here. There's power now to that pin. Okay. And now we'll go to that pin. And now we've got power. Where before we didn't because we turned on the buttons. So, there you go. That's what uh, those buttons uh, send power to. And it's my understanding that you could... Um, it has a, a limit of uh, two amps of a load um, to be put onto those. So we'll go ahead and turn all this off. Okay. Okay, so I've soldered the, uh, the um, battery connector inline fuse to the harness, the one that was supposed to go over the 325B. Um, I shortened the wires a little bit. I you know, slid a piece of shrink wrap, so it's ready to slide up here. And I also slid the outer sheath from this guy, because it's bigger than this side, and sh slid it over there. So I'll be able to put it all back on. It'll all be double protected right there. Okay, there it is shrink wrapped. Now I'll go ahead and slide this sheath back up over there. Okay, there we go. So we've got this ready to go ahead and connect up to the uh, battery. And uh, we've eliminated having to use up our other accessory connector, 325B, over in the, in the right panel. We can use that for, in my case, the cool flow fan or, um, you know, whatever accessory you need to plug in over there. Okay, I want to talk a little bit again about the uh, connector that plugs into the, the, uh, the connector under left panel, in the left panel, the accessory connector there. Um, again, it's got... Uh, a ground lead, uh, right in here the black one. Uh, the green lead is switched by the the uh, left switch panel on the fairing, the middle switch position, which I'm using for my, my fog lights, okay? So then the other two are for accessory one and accessory two. Accessory one, which ends up under the seat, um, and it's typically used for a heated seat, it's got two leads going into it, the ground, 
and the, the purple and yellow wire, which is direct power from the battery uh, as fed uh, from the relay. There's the direct power from the battery going in. Uh, there's the ground. Uh, here is the switch lead coming from here, accessory coming from here, accessory uh, uh, one. Uh, so that trips the relay and sends the power into that accessory one plug. Um, the accessory two button um, gets, uh, this lead gets a, a direct battery power for if you need that for something, the ground and the direct switch lead just from here. Um, so that's limited to two amps. Um, so we have to ask ourselves, okay, well, what happened to that middle position switch lead? It's obviously connected up because there's four wires here. Um, the green one, and I'm going to show you where it is. If we, I don't know why they did this, but if you pull this off, it's under here. Right there. There's our green lead for that uh, left switch bank on the fairing middle switch position. Okay, so you know where that is if you want to use it. And I didn't want to leave out depinning these Molex MX150 connectors. Um, this is the uh, ceiling pins. It's the same for pulling out leads. Um, you want to uh, gently uh, pop this up like that. And then you can use a tool or a um, I use this guy to focus, um, but the right size safety pin or or paper clip would work too. So this guy goes in right there, and I'm going to kind of push that in, and I'll grab some pliers here, pull that pin out, just like that. That's how they come out. If you don't have the pin in the, the uh, tool in there or a paper clip or whatever, this is just locked in. So there you go. Okay, we're gonna make that battery connection. So we've got to pop the ECM uh, out of the way, and we've got to take out these two bolts. Right there, um, to kind of swing the the battery uh, tray up out of the way. The ECM just pops in with these little side clippy things right here and then it's he's ready to come out so I'm gonna go ahead and get those bolts out of there all right so to get the tray off I slid this off this guy slides onto his little groove right here put him out of the way I got a roll of tape on the ECM just to keep it from springing back on me um, and then uh, also slid off this little guy here, off of, off of there, and, uh, and then you, you, the back comes up pretty easy, and you see this square cutout right here that goes on to that that guy down there, this this uh, metal thing right there. So you kind of reach your hand under here for the back side. Push forward and pull up, and it just folds over like that. And there's our battery. Okay, and, and before I go any further around the battery, I want to go ahead and pull out this 50 amp fuse right here. So, he's out of there. And I'm going to go ahead and Disconnect the battery here. And I always do the negative side first so that I can't arc out when taking off the positive side. Here we'll be back in a minute. I had already fished the uh, four way Molex down into the uh, left side cover. And it's, that's a bit of a pain. I had to loosen the, the frame right here. Plastic frame, but anyway, it went through. Then I realized, oh gosh, I need to uh, get a ground for that shortened. Remember the uh, center switch from the left side switch panel. The green lead is shorter than everything else, so I went ahead and I um, soldered in a, a 
extra ground lead so it'll come up and then I'll put shrink wrap on those so it'll, it'll come up as its own separate little um, uh, bleed out. Okay, so here is that ground and this is back to normal right here. It's heat shrinked and soldered in there. So this is uh, again the uh, left switch bank uh, center switch position and I'm these are the leads from my uh, fog lights and I'm gonna go ahead I think and rather than solder them up I'm gonna go ahead and use a sealed MX150 Molex uh, pin and socket and uh, so they can be unplugged in case any, this harness ever needs to be removed okay, so we've got the uh, connector installed a Molex MX150 on the uh, blue-green wire. It is uh, powered by the middle switch, left fairing. And uh, this is the lead that goes up to my uh, LED Daymaker fog lights. The arch runs up uh, under the race, under the tank and out down to those things. There's another video on that. And we'll go ahead and connect the two. And there's that. Okay, so we went ahead and put everything like so. This is where the fuse goes for the uh, power hookup that we made. And uh, in the instruction manual, it says to have the relay uh, in right here, and it didn't fit right, and it looked like hell. Um, this is the uh, connector where it's supposed to go, typically for... Uh, power seat, um, a heated seat I mean, and here's the left side panel, there's the harness coming in, connected up to that, um, and everything else kind of ended up in the right side panel, the uh, relay is right here, this was already there, oops, relay is right there, this was already there. Um, that's a uh, terminating resistor um, and my fog lamp connector is back in there. Here's accessory two, ready to be used um, for whatever I decide to use it for. And there you go.